Welcome to MOT Today. Hope you guys are doing well. Today we have a special guest. So as everybody knows that tunes into the show, uh, we like to start off with state news. And the state that we are in is Ohio. And the topic that we're going to be discussing today in Ohio is actually a nationwide issue. It's just not restricted to Ohio. So it will be applicable to other states as well, wherever you're at going to be watching this. Um, so before we go get started, I want to introduce our guest. Our guest is Karen Kessler. She is the bureau chief at the State House News Bureau. Uh, she is, she's been a journalist uh, for quite some time. She's moderated debates uh, for governors, for state senators. If I'm not mistaken, she's also produced award-winning series on identity theft and the Y2K panic. So she is, uh, you know, an incredible journalist, and uh, we're excited to have her on the show. So, Karen, thank you for being on the show. Thank it's you, great Karen. to be here. Thank you so much for the, the invitation. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. So the issue that we're talking about today is the redistricting of maps. So the redrawing of maps. And, you know, as we were talking before the show, I think that there's a lot of people who don't really understand what that is, why it matters, and why they should even care about it. So before we get into what Ohio is going through, I think it would be very prudent of us to talk about what exactly it is to, you know, redraw the maps uh, for districts and gerrymandering. So what exactly is the purpose of drawing maps for districts and gerrymandering? Well, every 10 years, the Census Bureau does its count and the populations change. And so you have to redraw maps for both legislative state house and senate districts as well as congressional districts because populations change people move around and so we're in that process right now of coming up with new maps for both the 132 members of the ohio house and senate and also the now 15 members of congress we had 16 members of congress now we have 15. so these are two separate processes and back in 2015 voters in ohio overwhelmingly voted to change the way that state house and senate district maps were drawn in 2015 18, they overwhelmingly voted to change the way congressional maps are drawn. The whole idea was to take partisan politics out of the process and really get more minority party buy-in so you could have more competitive districts. So you wouldn't have the same people constantly winning because they were in districts that were drawn specifically for them to win. That was the whole idea. But here we are with both sets of maps that were drawn by a seven member panel called the Ohio Redistricting Commission. Both of the sets of maps, the State House and Senate and the congressional maps have been thrown out by the Ohio Supreme Court. The court said that based on those two constitutional amendments that voters approved, those maps are unconstitutionally gerrymandered toward the Republicans who drew them. Gotcha. Okay, so what exactly is the difference then between the first map that was ruled unconstitutional and the new map that the Ohio Redistricting Commission has actually voted on and said it's good. But now I think it's going to the Supreme Court again. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Uh, there were groups that sued after the first map was approved last year. These groups include the League of Women Voters and other organizations that really advocate on behalf of voters' rights and felt that these maps were unconstitutionally gerrymandered. And the, the court agreed with them. The court said that based on a couple of different factors, the uh, things that are in the constitution, these maps did not stand up. And one of the big things, the thing that's gotten the most attention is the partisan breakdown or the percentage breakdown. The idea would be based on these amendments that the maps be drawn to reflect voters' preferences. And in the last couple of elections, voters in Ohio have voted 54% Republican, 46% Democratic. And, and I mean, Donald Trump won the state twice, and that was the percentage that he won by. And, and so the map should be drawn to reflect that. Well, the first map that was drawn would have given 64% of the 132 seats in the state legislature to Republicans. So that's not going along with what the constitutional amendment said. The Supreme Court threw that out and said, you have to go back and draw a new map. The new maps that were approved were will be uh, about 57% for Republicans. So again, not 54%. So the groups have now sued again saying, you're still not getting it. These are still not constitutional maps. They're still partisan gerrymanders. We're waiting on the Ohio Supreme Court now to decide if that's the case or not. And the real big issue here is the people who want to run for House and Senate, we have a primary in May. They have a filing deadline of Wednesday. 
And so they don't know where their districts are. They don't know where they, what, with the house that they live in, they don't know what district it's in. And so we're really running out of time. Right. And that actually leads me to another question that I just thought about right now. And that is, weren't there other maps that were proposed that were actually more fair than the ones that were actually, you know, attempted to be passed? In the Supreme Court decision, there was a map that was cited that was constitutional. So yeah, there are other maps. And the people who have been pushing against these maps and the two Democrats on the commission have said that there are maps that exist. That there are maps that meet all these constitutional criteria and that this panel could get this stat thing done in a matter of days, but that they have chosen not to. They want to retain their partisan control over the Ohio House and Senate. Now, this map that they just drew would take it down from a supermajority to just a majority. But mm -hmm. still, the groups that are suing say this is not what voters wanted. This is not constitutional and the maps need to be redrawn. Right. And then this also, if this map is passed, we're going to go through this again in four years as opposed to the traditional 10 years. Can you go into that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, the constitutional amendment put in this idea of a four-year map versus a 10-year map. And this was supposed to be an incentive. It was supposed to make the lawmakers on this commission vote, work together and come up with a map that would last for 10 years so we wouldn't have to keep doing this. Well, that's not the way it apparently has worked out because they haven't done a map that gets the minority party to vote for it. And so we end up with this process that's going to go forward every four years. One thing that I think is interesting here, uh, there was just a set of filings on Friday where the, the people who were defending the maps, the Republicans on the redistricting commission defending the maps, they've asked the Ohio Supreme Court to, if they can't come up with a decision by February 11th, to just keep the maps in place, the ones that they drew, the ones that we're now talking about, to keep that 57 percent Republican map in place through the end of 2022, which means that would essentially be a four year map almost. So this is it, it's it's complicated, but it's so important because this will decide who is going to represent you in the Ohio House and Senate for the next at least four years. And ideally, if both parties can come together and work in a bipartisan way, 10 years. Right. And then I remember watching a video it was a short little video by the author David Pepper, I believe his name is, and he wrote a book. It's titled Laboratories of America. I haven't read it yet, so I don't know if it's a good book or not. It's, it's so Laboratories of Autocracy, actually. Oh, OK. It's, Autocracy. It, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And David Pepper is the former chair of the Ohio Democratic Party. He was a very uh, outspoken critic of the process that happened to draw both sets of maps. He testified in front of the Ohio Redistricting Commission. He's been very active on this issue. Yeah, and he did a video on it that really, uh, I guess, illuminated the issue very well. And um, he was using a whiteboard, and the way he uh, illustrated it was basically the Republicans have like secured uh, a large voter base based on these, you know, lines that have been drawn for the district. And then the map, and then the portion that they had given to the Democrats was actually would be considered more of like a swing district, so it would give them a lot more, I guess leverage or not leverage but security in say a tight election season which i thought was kind of fascinating and whether or not you're republican or democrat i mean it's kind of a smart move on the republicans part if you want to keep your power right so i mean i thought that was yeah. pretty fascinating i didn't know that, it, that that that's actually what they did yeah but the idea of competitive districts is part of this whole thing too. The idea of districts not only just being drawn for Republicans or for Democrats, but having competitive districts where people could run, where it wouldn't automatically be the Republican, the Democrat winning. And and you, uh, the argument of having a situation where you have both a Republican and a Democrat actually asking voters to go along with them and not just having the district just go one way or the other. I mean, that's the kind of situation we're in right now in a lot of districts where whoever wins the primary is going to win the general election. And so you end up with more extreme candidates because people who vote in the primary tend to be more on the farther ends of both the right and the left. So we end up with more extreme candidates guaranteed to win those districts. And then we end up with legislation that people find is really extreme. And so that's why having competitive districts is really important, but also reflecting how voters actually vote in, in contests like president. 
Mm -hmm. And this has been an issue going on for a long time in Ohio for years where we've tried to, um, you know, put new processes in place. I believe the League of Women are uh, one of the one of the groups that are at the forefront of that push for years now, for years. So, um, you know, hopefully we see some change there so that way we don't, you know, keep going through this process here. Um, but you did mention earlier that we have, I think, until Wednesday for the certain candidates uh, to finish their filing. So how is that going to affect things if, say, there isn't any resolution by then? I, this is all a brand new process. I mean, the whole process changed in 2015 and 2018 with those constitutional amendments because people were so frustrated with the way maps had been drawn before. You might remember, if you go back to 2010, 2011, the stories about uh, the, the fact, uh, the, the way the maps were drawn in a hotel room in Columbus, and uh, there, there were people involved. Uh, you know, even the the Speaker of the House then, John Boehner, was on the phone deciding where districts would be drawn. And people didn't like that. And so they wanted it to be a more transparent and open process. Well, it, it really hasn't been. I mean, yes, we've had meetings, but you can actually watch meetings. You can watch all sorts of proceedings of state government on the Ohio channel, which is kind of like Ohio's C-SPAN. And there have been some meetings there publicly, but a lot of the stuff is still being done behind closed doors. And that's what's been frustrating to a lot of the activists from League of Women Voters, Common Cause Ohio, some of these other groups that have been pushing for fair districts for years and years and years. Right now, with that filing deadline coming up on Wednesday, the legislature just passed a bill in the last week that would change that filing deadline and move it forward. But, you know, we still don't have maps. And that's really the question. And again, I said there's two processes, these legislative maps and the congressional map. They have to still draw the congressional map. So all of this is happening as the May primary is moving closer and closer and closer. May seems like a long way away, but not for people who want to run for office, mm -hmm. who need to get their campaigns together to raise money, to do all the things that you need to do to run for office. Time is ticking away. Right, right. Now, Mick, you had one question that you wanted to ask Karen. Um, that is off topic here. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with the redistricting, uh, but it is an important question nonetheless. Yeah. I want to thank you again, Karen. Uh, it's an honor to have you on here to pick your brain. Um, just a quick thing. Um, what's another issue that you think Ohioans should be paying attention to in addition to the re redrawing of the maps? I, there are so many. <laughs> I can't even tell you. But I think one big issue that people need to watch out for is school funding. And in the last budget that passed last year, there was a change to the school funding formula to try to make it more fair and less based on property taxes. And here's the, where the Supreme Court comes back in. You might recall uh, that the way Ohio funds public schools through property taxes mostly was ruled unconstitutional by the Ohio Supreme Court four times. And each time they finally, they, they finally eventually just sent it back to the legislature and said, you guys have to fix this. And this is the closest, we got the closest to an actual fix ever in the last budget to try to balance out uh, state funding by adding in not just property taxes, but also household income. And to try to get some more money to lower income schools where people are poor, they have more challenges, and unfortunately their outcomes for those students have been worse because those kids grow up with so many challenges and issues that they have to deal with. Uh, but unfortunately, the school funding formula was only funded for two years. And so I'm really interested to see what the next legislature does with school funding and also with school choice, because there's been this move to try to get more vouchers into the system. And obviously schools aren't happy about that. I, I'm just wondering where that all goes. So I think school funding is going to be a really big issue. It almost always is for any parent in Ohio, any taxpayer in Ohio. School funding is really critical. Awesome. Yeah. Great question. Great question. Thank you. Well, Karen, thank you very much for coming on the show and sharing your knowledge on this important issue that, it, like like we talked about earlier, it affects the whole nation. So Yeah, absolutely. And other states are going through this. And there, there are partisan gerrymanders all over the country. But I really think that it's important for people to, to pay attention to this. It's not, I mean, I know it sounds boring, drawing maps, what, big deal. But it's not because it really does it can give the party in power a really unfair advantage. And as we're seeing a lot of legislation passing in different states that really starts to take away the rights of voters, not only to vote, but also for their vote to be upheld and not be you know, decided by a state legislature or some other panel that they didn't 
want that outcome to be the way that the legislature did, these are all important issues to pay attention to. And so I, I strongly encourage people to watch what's going on at the state house, not just because I report on it for public radio and television, but because it's really, really important. Yes, I, I couldn't agree more. And so Karen, where can people find you if they want to stay up to date on you know what you're talking about, what you're covering, what you guys are doing over there at the state house? Well, our website is statenews.org, but you can find us on television, on public television around the state. Uh, in Cleveland, it's on WVIZ, WVIZ Idea Stream, and uh, also on the Ohio Channel. The Ohio Channel is a separate, like I mentioned, it's kind of Ohio C-SPAN, but they carry our show and other issues and programming of statewide interest. And then, of course, Ohio's public radio stations. I'm on WCPN all, all the time, and, and I, I love my job. <laughs> awesome. Well, Karen, once again, we really do appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Hey, great questions, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Have a great day.